Hello again. Um, in this part, we are going to deal first with system modeling. And system modeling is how to translate a physical system into a set of equations that reasonably accurately represent the system. What do we rely on? We rely first in the laws of physics, uh, for example, Newton's law. Newton's law could be applied to an, uh, anything that's moving or rotating, an electric motor, an internal combustion engine, a rocket, or we can even apply it to a stone thrown or dropped out of a window. Uh, similar laws of physics are Kirchhoff's law in electric circuits or the ideal gas law if you, if you are modeling a thermodynamic um, device. Uh, the second source of information, uh, equations related to the operation of the device. Each type of motor would have a specific equations that describe the relationship between the various parameters of, of the motor. Similar logic applies to all devices. And we will start here by considering a case of an electric motor, but first we are going to revise the laws of physics. So we have here uh, a system, if, if there is a spring, the spring, the stiffness of the spring is K, and then the torque produced by this stiffness is, or the resistive torque, if you, the, the opposite torque, if you're trying to twist the spring, will be constant proportional to the displacement. In linear, if, if in linear systems, you would write uh, F equals oh, uh, K X, where X is the displacement, if you were pressing the compress uh, the, the the spring the second element is the viscous viscous damping if the damping coefficient is b the torque produced uh, according to uh, due to the viscous damping is proportional to the rate of change of angular position and actually if you took if you look at the linear system it will be f equals b multiplied by uh, V or B, and that's dx by dt. The third element is the effect of the inertia. The inertia, the Newton's law here is, the torque is J d2 theta by dt squared. This is actually similar to force equals math multiplied by acceleration, where the acceleration is the second derivative of the displacement with respect to time. So we consider a case when all three uh, forces or torques are present. So here we have some, all these forces give us the torque due to the inertia, uh, viscous damping, and the spring action. Uh, normally the spring action in, in electric motors, which we were going to consider now, uh, can be neglected. First, if we, this is the time domain equation, we can find the S domain. Remember, in, in Laplace transform, the first derivative will be S. Oh, that's, uh, let me delete that. If I can find the eraser. And the, the first derivative will be uh, d by dt. Here, that will be s. And the second derivative, d2 by dt squared, that's s squared. So we collect terms, we end up with this equation. If we ignore the stiffness of the spring, that simplifies the equation a bit. Remember that x is the displacement, theta is the angle, the angular displacement. The velocity, linear velocity, is v dx by dt. In rotational motions, it's 
theta dot or d theta by dt is omega. I use omega lowercase. This is the omega lowercase. The capital omega, the Greek letter omega, is the ohm uh, symbol used in electric circuits. Then the equation can be written instead of second derivative. It's j d omega by dt plus b d theta by dt is omega. And apply Laplace transform and end up the relationship between the torque and the uh, angular velocity omega. Remember omega lowercase, this is in the time domain, this is the same letter omega capital uppercase which we use for the S domain. I use capital T for both time domain and S domain but uh, that's why I say torque in the time domain, torque in the S domain. From that, I can find the relationship between omega and the torque. So if you have a torque applied to a system that has an inertia J and viscous damping B, the v angular velocity omega in the S domain will be the torque divided by JS plus B. So this is in our in, in modeling of mechanical systems, this is an equation which we obtained valid for any device, could be a, that that is rotating and is subject to inertia and viscous damping. Doesn't have to be an electric motor, could be an internal combustion engine, could be a wheel driven manually, could be anything that is rotating. Now, if we look at the modeling of a DC motor, we have here, this is the armature winding, has resistance of the armature and the inductance of the armature as the motor the voltage is applied to the motor a back emf will be generated this is the field excitation this could be a winding or a permanent magnet the only difference is if it's an excitation with a winding we can change the current into the winding and control the motor with, with the bike via change of excitation. If it's a permanent magnet, well, I can't change it once we built the motor. Anyway, as far as modeling is concerned, Kirchhoff's law tells us if you sum all the voltages around any loop, like this loop from the terminal and going all the way around, the sum of all the voltage equals zero, or the applied voltage equal all the voltage drops. This is Kirchhoff's law. And this Kirchhoff's law, we apply here it to an electric motor circuit, the armature circuit. You can apply it to any electric circuits, whether it's DC or AC. From this equation in the time domain, we can rearrange and then trans take Laplace transform. And then again, from this equation here, take the current common and find the current for a given applied voltage and back EMF. And this is the second equation. Again, I highlight this in red. This is an equation we obtained for this electric motor using the laws of physics. We haven't yet utilized the equations that are particular to this uh, device we are modeling. From knowledge of electric machines, we know that the torque produced by a DC motor is proportional to the armature current. So this first, before we go that, these two equations, this equation on the, uh, the current equation is from Kirchhoff's law, the omega, the velocity equation is from the uh, Newton's uh, application of Newton's law. This equation here, torque, is proportional to the armature current. This is for this particular device. And we know it from previous study related to this particular device. And in the S domain, that will be torque of S equals KT IA of S. Another equation that is particular to DC motors is the back EMF introduced here is proportional to the rotational speed. If there is no rotation, the, the motor is at standstill, the value of a, EA will be zero and so on. So this again, a second equation, 
which what do I get it from? I get it from knowledge of the physics of this particular device we are modeling. And the S domain gives me the other blue equation. Now I have four equations. And I arranged all equations so that on the left hand side there is only one unknown. IA here, omega here, torque and EA. I can start constructing the block diagram. I that is shown on the next slide. And you can see it here. I can start from anywhere. I highlighted these two equations in red is what I got from the laws of physics. And in blue is what I got from knowledge of the specific operation of the device. I can start anywhere. I can start here. Imagine that if I start here, from this end, imagine that what on the left is, is doesn't exist. Using this equation, so I will say if I have T divided by this, I get omega. So this here is what I get from this equation. Then I can go backward and I say T is constant multiplied by A. I can move this way and apply this equation. I can go forward and multiply omega by omega here, multiply it from this equation by Ke, and I will get E. Or I can start, the most logical is we start from the uh, pink color. I just go to dark something. So if, if I normally we start from this equation and we assume that we know V uh, and we don't know E but we say we start with this part and this part this is V A minus A and divide by this you get I multiply by KT you get torque and use the rest this equation you get omega, omega, use it, and close the block diagram. It doesn't matter where you start. Uh, well, the reason I'm emphasizing this is uh, uh, once in class, uh, a very bright student asked me, what happens if you start anywhere else? Why you, start, you obtained this block diagram? Because you started from this equation. So you can start anywhere with any equation, and you move either forward or backward. Anyway, once we got this block diagram for the system, Remember, we started with windings, with iron and copper, a machine that's rotating, creating noise, and now and producing torque. And now we ended up with this nice block diagram. Once we have a block diagram, remember Mason's formula, I can find the transfer function omega over V. And I can simplify this transfer function, end up with this expression. Then I can move on and substitute in the transfer function. For example, if I have values for R, L, and various K. Note here that KT and KE and DC machines, they have the same numerical value. The units are different. If I substitute this, I will end up with something. If I do by the hand, I ended up with theta dot, which is omega over VA, gives this expression. And I have two poles here. Now, but instead of I might be clumsy with the calculator, I don't want to do this. So I can do it with my lab, MATLAB. I just define the various parameters from the table. So this is just the table in, uh, in, in, in MATLAB script. Then define G is this equation here, and the ZPK that's to give me the zero, the poles, and, and the gain K of G. And when I run it, I get this equation. But this is G, and ZPK it will give that. It's near enough. This is 9.99, it's 10, 2.003, that's, uh, that's two, so that's near enough. So that's about system modeling. What you can try to study is the effect of changing the parameters and what 
that would do to the transfer function. For example, if you uh, if if the viscous damping coefficient is 0 0.001, very very small, then you will get g in that case will be uh, two over s plus two multiplied by s plus 0 0.11. What is the significance of this? The significance of this is we have here one pole at minus 0.11 and the other pole at minus two. So obviously this is the, our dominant pole and we can, if we wish, and if it makes life easier for us, we can ignore this pole and without sacrificing the accuracy of the model. So that's briefly all what I wanted to say about the system modeling. Remember, two sources of equation, laws of physics and the uh, equations that are specific to the device. If you don't understand how the device operates, you cannot model it. And we'll stop at this point for now.